Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters, and welcome to my review of Children of the Corn. Children of the Corn. So yes, in my quest to deliver, you know, as many horror movie reviews as I possibly can for the channel and for you guys, I went out and saw Children of the Corn 2023, which, you know, this is a movie that has been buried for a while. I, I assume that it's been done for quite some time because a lot of the stuff online says that this is supposedly a 2020 film, uh, but we're just now getting it. And uh, initially when we reported on it, we were kind of uh, misconstrued, thinking that this was going to go directly to uh, Shutter. It is going to Shutter, but it won't be there for another couple weeks. Uh, but they're doing a limited theatrical release, so I decided I'd go check it out and let you guys know what I thought. And uh, yeah, to sum it up, it's uh, it's not great. No, this is, uh, this is not something I was hoping for. Um, you know, we did a trailer reaction couple weeks back uh and you know it's never a good sign when a movie drops its trailer uh near two to three weeks before the movie actually is supposed to come out uh that's always a, a not a great uh signal of things to come and uh yeah you know i was positive on it luke was too i mean they went for that kind of uh 80s nostalgia with the voiceover and uh trying to kind of reel you in it felt like it was trying to um adhere to something that we don't see too often anymore uh, with the style of trailer that it was presenting. So we thought maybe it could play into those elements uh, as the movie is being made. Unfortunately, uh, this film tends to just fall into every single remake trap that there is. Uh, and I want to preface this before I really start getting into my criticisms by saying, uh, yes, it is called Children of the Corn. So there's many child actors in this movie. Uh, I will not be sitting here uh, bashing uh, child actors as, you know, they're only as good as the material they're given and they're only as good as their direction. Uh, I think that there's a lot of room to grow for a lot of the young actors in uh, this property. Um, and I don't really put a lot of my issues with the film on their shoulders. Um, where this film, I think, fully starts to uh, break apart is right at the bones it's the it's the script uh th this movie is very poorly written very poorly paced um it, it's it feels very tone deaf to a lot of what's going on i i could never tell um you know if these kids were you know going crazy for you know uh, worshiping whatever's in the corn or if it was you know some kind of uh, a chemical thing um, you know, they, they just was never clear. And, you know, it all comes down to the writing. Everything in this movie is, is just uh, grasping. It's, it's all just trying to grasp at just those common tropes that we expect from remakes where they're just like, OK, we had a movie that was popular in the 80s. We've got a name like Stephen King attached to this. Um, let's, you know, bring it into the modern day. Let's make it more violent. Uh, let's let's have paper thin characters where their motivations are never fully clear. And it just gives you a real paint by numbers uh, modern horror remake that just adds nothing to the conversation. It, it really just felt like a slog to get through. Like, I'm sitting there in the theater. I'm waiting for this movie to grip me. And it never did. Not even from the opening frames. I just could feel it as I was watching that this is just not going to be for me. And, you know, it, again, it's really, I think, the bones of this issue come from the script. I know the director uh, wrote and directed this film. But it, you just there's so many inconsistencies and I'll, I'll get into some minor spoilers at the end here of things that just did not work for me as a whole. But I, if you do want to check this thing out, I'm just going to say, don't go to the theater to see this. I, I mean, it, the theater is pretty expensive. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money, but I would say wait for streaming. You only have to wait a couple of weeks. And uh, if, if you're that eager to check it out, because yeah, overall it's, it's bland. It, it offers nothing to the conversation, like I said. It, it, it brings this whole concept that Stephen King developed in this short story of just like uh, what waits in the corn. And it gives you, again, the most paper-thin representation of what that could be. 
you know, I, I was never a huge fan of uh, the original film. Uh, you know, I've never been a huge fan of the series of Children of the Corn, I got to say. Uh, but it is one of those things where it's an intriguing concept. It's an intriguing idea to have a town where kids have kind of risen up and killed their parents and taken over. And they have this kind of, uh, you know, religious society with the corn and everything. And, you know, I'll give it to them here that there's a couple of elements that were creepy, that were interesting. But again, they're brushed by so quickly and the characters are just so paper thin that it, it just amounts to you just kind of sitting there in this fog, uh, watching this film just kind of unfold in front of you. There feels like there's no stakes. Um, you know, everybody's kind of sleepwalking through this and, you know, people's motivations just flip on a dime and overall, I, I was left by the end of it just saying, you know, I there there's nothing of value in this film for me. There there was nothing uh, of substance for me to really latch onto, and where I could say, yeah, this is worth your time. Um, it just again feels like a paint by numbers. We have a property, we have a title, we have an author attached to this. Let's throw this out in theater. Stephen King's a hot property always. So let's see who we can get to see this. And yeah, there, there's definitely a reason it was buried. And uh, I, I can't sit here and recommend anybody go out and see Children of the Corn. It is, uh, it is just really going to kind of fade away, I feel like. I, I don't think there's a lot of hype behind this movie. Um, you know, our videos on it have gotten some decent uh, viewership numbers for the size of our channel, I would say. But other than that, I do not expect people to really even remember that this thing came out uh, by the time 2023 comes to an end. Um, if I had to compare this to anything, I, I would say this is very much on the same level as uh, Firestarter from last year, where, you know, it just happens you watch it and it just doesn't attach to you there's there's just no real passion or substance behind it it just genuinely feels again like we have the property we have the author let's throw it out there and make a quick buck now i did say in my short that this is you know in comparison uh a lot of these trivial events that were happening prior to my screening uh reminded me of uh jeepers creepers reborn um I don't want you to get in your head that the film is that poorly made because um, that movie just all around had so many issues. Uh, you know, the presentation was poor. Now, I'm not saying that this movie isn't competently shot in any ways. Like, I think that it does look like a movie. Um, you know, at least it has that grasp to say, like, yeah, this looks like a studio picture. There's just no soul. There is no substance uh behind it. it it is like looking into a vacuum uh, and and just nothing is coming back to you to reciprocate um and you know they they really just i i, I couldn't tell you a character's name i couldn't tell you really other than that our main character was going to go to college at some point um and that created some tension in her family um I, I couldn't tell you anything else about it and i just got out of the theater from seeing it about 15 minutes ago um so yeah that's that's pretty much it i cannot recommend this movie to uh any <laughs> anybody out there but i mean spend your money where you want to spend your money just know that if you're looking for my opinion i would say skip this and uh maybe watch it on streaming if you're morbidly curious but i think that this is just another remake we can throw on the burn pile but uh, to discuss some spoilers that really perplexed me, there is one big portion of this movie towards the beginning that I just, it breaks a lot of logic and it just drove me insane the whole movie. And the fact is, at the beginning of this movie, um, you were led to believe that one of the boys, come, this, this older boy, comes out of the corn, uh, passes our, our main antagonist before she becomes the antagonist of the film, and um, he goes into this uh, this foster home that they're staying at and murders a bunch of people, like a, a bunch of adults. And, um, you know, the, the, the sheriff's response to this, because it's a hostage situation, is to pump a bunch of noxious uh, gas that you would use to, I guess, uh, euthanize cows is what they said, um, into the school. And there's a bunch of children in there. 
and they just kill them all. And the sheriff suffers no repercussions. No, it never comes back up. He He's in the film until he is dispatched with a bunch of other adults by the kids later. And uh, I'm just sitting here just like, th that would never happen. Like, I know that's that might be nitpicky and people being like, well, that has nothing to do with the Children of the Corn story. It's just that's the level of thought that was put into the screenplay here is just that yeah he's a bad guy because he kills kids and then also all the adults are just so over the top they they just they bash on the, these kids they rag on them um they're constantly like egging them on and talking about beating their kids and their children uh there are sequences where these kids walk down streets and um you know there's just domestic abuse situations all around them in every single house and it's just like Good God, like you you could not have uh, handled this with a heavier hand than that. And, you know, honestly, it's it's a wash. It's through and through. I I, I was not pleased with this. I, I really uh, if I didn't have this channel uh, to, to do this and see these movies, then I, I wouldn't have seen this. I know that for a fact. Uh, maybe Morbid Curiosity would have gotten the best on me on streaming, but uh yeah, I think Luke was right for staying away from this one. Um, but hey, I'm just doing my job. I just kind of make sure I get the uh, my thoughts and opinions out to you guys. And you guys let me know what you thought of Children of the Corn. If you're going to see it, if you've already seen it. Um, if you had plans to see it, does this make you change your mind? God, I hope so. But uh, yeah, other than that, uh, you guys can keep up with us on the channel here. As always, we're uh, on our way to 1,000 subscribers, uh, hoping to get there before May, which will be our year mark. Um, you know, everything's been going great on the channel. We just had our collaboration uh, talking about Scream with Evan from Rockland Graves. So please check that video out. It was a super fun time. Evan's a super cool dude with a great channel. And check his channel out, too. Um, but yeah, no, I, I uh, yeah. Children of the Corn, 2023. Uh, that That's going to be a no from me. That app, I'm sorry. So until next time, uh, I'm Dylan Newell. And uh, stay scared.